Hey, what's up guys? This is the TP-Link DACO X55. It is a mesh Wi-Fi unit that supports Wi-Fi 6. So I'm going to do an unboxing of this. I'm gonna do speed tests and all the configurations, so wired and wireless backhaul. I'm also gonna do some internet speed tests as well as some local area speed tests. And I'm gonna do some range tests. So I'm gonna fully test this thing out as I always do in all my mesh Wi-Fi videos. So this thing is designed to cover up to 6,500 square feet with all three units. Looking at the back is a really good illustration of what a mesh Wi-Fi is and kind of how it works. So essentially, a mesh Wi-Fi is two or more devices that create a single network where at least one of the two is a dedicated router. So in the case of the X55, we have three units. So one of them is acting as the router that's hooked up to your modem, replacing your existing router. And then the other two are acting as access points. So in this case, they are wirelessly connected to this guy and they're essentially expanding your Wi-Fi coverage, which is why it's called a Wi-Fi dead zone killer. So if you take your Wi-Fi device, you're in this room, it will automatically connect you here. Then when you walk to this other room, it will automatically switch you here. So there's nothing you need to do and you do connect to the same SSID, the same Wi-Fi name and that's what it says here. Now, TP-Link also offers their home shield, which is included, and that offers some network protection, some parental controls, quality of service, and some reports. All right. Very similar in size to the Deco X60 that I reviewed a while ago. So we have three ethernet ports. They all support gigabit speeds, and there is a power adapter. So overall, Pretty nice design, very similar to the other decos that I've reviewed. And this is the bottom, should be good to go. So I do believe all three of these are routers. However, when you hook them up in the network, only the main one hooked up to your modem is acting as the router. But essentially, all three of these are the same. Let's take a look at this box, which is typically just the power wires and an ethernet cable. So we do have the ethernet cable. And it does not say if it's Cat5e or Cat6, but I'm sure it's at least Cat5e, which does support gigabit speeds. And we're going to have three power adapters, and let's see if it also works. Yeah, it's 100 to 240 volts, and it's thin, so if you're plugging it in, there should be space on the bottom for the other outlet, and this is regular. However, you know, it does go pretty long that way. And yeah, so the same power adapter, three of these. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's been over two weeks since I've unboxed this thing and I've been using it as my main system and so far so good. So no jobs, nothing like that. And in that time I had a chance to do all the speed tests and range tests, so I have all those numbers here. And I did do wired and wireless backhaul. So for my testing devices, I use my iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device. And just for kicks, I also use my Pixel 6 Pro which is my Wi-Fi 6E device, just to see if there was going to be a big difference between the two or any difference at all, because this is a Wi-Fi 6 system. All right, so jumping straight into the internet speed test. Now, one thing to mention is no matter how fast your router is, you're limited by your internet speeds when you're accessing the internet. So whatever you're paying for to your ISP or internet service provider, that's what you're limited to. So in my case, I'm limited to 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. And notice I said megabits per second, not megabytes per second. So one byte is equal to eight bits. That's the conversion rate. So all the numbers I say from here on out are gonna be in megabits per second. Okay, so with those speeds on my computer, when I do the test via Ethernet with the speed test app, if you guys are wondering. So, or really just go on the speedtest.net. I get those full speeds, no problem, again, because I'm hooked up via Ethernet, and each one of these ports do support gigabit. So it can support the speeds that I have. Now, when I do the speed test with the Wi-Fi devices, that's a different story because Wi-Fi devices typically can't go as fast as ethernet devices but i still got pretty good speeds i mean there's definitely a drastic decrease in the upload speeds but that's typical with most of the mesh wi-fi's that i test 
But overall, pretty good speeds and more than fast enough to do anything I need to do on a phone or really a Wi-Fi device. To truly test a router, I do a local area speed test server where I make my computer the server itself and I go from phone to router to computer and that really isolates the router because now I'm no longer dependent on my internet speeds or the public speed test server which can and usually is in use by other people and or companies. So this kind of really isolates it and there's usually a big jump in numbers, at least a decent jump in numbers when I get to these. To keep this consistent with all my other Mesh Wi-Fi videos, I'm gonna use the same option numbering scheme. So starting with option number one, which is a single router configuration. So just because it comes in a three pack doesn't actually mean you need to use all three. So you could just grab one of these and it will act as the router. And I get some very, very good speeds, especially with the Wi-Fi 6C device it was almost gigabit speeds, which is very, very impressive. Skipping option number two, that's when I have a router and a dedicated non-router. But since these are all technically routers, I'm gonna to jump to option number three, which is called wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul. And that's when I have these hooked up to each other via ethernet, either with a switch in between or just directly connected to each other. As long as there's an ethernet going from one to the other, it's wired backhaul. Now this is going to give the best possible speech just like in the single router configuration. When I do the speed test, now I'm doing it on the secondary one. So if this guy sucked up to my server uh, and this guy sucked up via ethernet to this guy, this is the one I'm gonna connect to and do the speed test. And I pretty much get identical speeds as option number one, which is what I was expecting since it does support gigabit speeds. Moving to option number four, that's called wireless backhaul. And essentially it's the same thing as wired backhaul, except you remove the ethernet cable connecting them to each other. So in my case, this guy is still hooked up to the server and this guy is around two rooms away. In my case, it was around 40 feet away or so, hooked up to power and this guy is wirelessly talking to this guy. And when I do the speed test, I'm connected to this one. So I'm doing the speed test very close to this and the numbers I got were far less and that's because this is a dual band system. So typically dual band systems don't do as well as tri band systems or quad band systems now that they exist. But essentially the reason, the main reason being is they have less bands. So most tri bands either have a dedicated backhaul channel where nothing is being shared or if they're oscillating between the three, well, there's an additional channel that's designed for that. But the Deco X55 actually still did fairly well considering it's a dual band system, just like the Deco X60, which was the best dual band system that I've tested. Now I haven't tested the X60 compared to the X55 in the same scenario, but I would say based on their speed ratings, they should be very, very similar to each other. Now moving to range tests, so range will vary based on location. It depends if you're between floors, if there's a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other interference, a lot of other routers around, all of this stuff can hurt your range. So if you're in a more open area, you typically could get more range. So I'm now in a more open area, so I typically get more range now. And this thing actually did very, very well Considering the price of this thing, considering this is basically a budget dual band system, I would say this thing did phenomenal. It went all the way up to 250 feet, which is very, very, very impressive. I, I did not expect it to go there. I mean, it was starting to cut off around there, but the fact that it went that far, that was actually very impressive. And for those of you guys wondering, my ping was nine milliseconds and my jitter was one millisecond at the farthest distance. So that was pretty much the worst case scenario. So you set this thing up and control it using the Deco app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. And it's one of my favorite apps for controlling mesh Wi-Fi's. And that's because it has a very nice, simple, clean, organized interface, where it's just very simple to get to stuff. All your main stuff is there. And if you want more advanced options, you go to the advanced section and you can get more control there. But overall, very, very pleasant, non-laggy, responsive, everything's golden. Now, is it worth getting these? Why or why not? Well, it all depends on your situation. In my mind, this would be a really good choice if you're going to do a wired backhaul setup, if your internet speeds were up to a gigabit, and you wanted some pretty good range considering the price of this thing. 
If you were going to do wireless backhaul, then I would probably consider a tri-band system. This, this still does fine for wireless backhaul considering it's a dual band system, but I typically recommend tri-band systems. And if you're looking for something around the same price as this, I'd consider the Deco X68. I've done reviews for that one as well. So, but let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. Is it worth getting these? Why or why not? And as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.